Yeah, Red Rider, this is the Cottonmouth in the Psycho Billy Cranger. Negatory on the cost of this machine there, Red Rider. You might say I went to the junkyard and picked it apart. It's cheaper that way. Uh, what model is it? <laughs> well, it's a Ford, Cummins, Explorer, Passat, Durango, F-150, just to name a couple. So I got this truck just over a year ago, and it already had the 4BT and the M5 OD. R2 trans in it, just five speed trans with a 0.8 overdrive. I've done work constantly to this thing since then. Imagine you had your buddies over that you would not trust working on your rig and you had them help you with an engine swap for one weekend and one weekend only. Been a lot of work. It already had the 8.8 31 spline rear end out of an Explorer under it. Since then, I took apart multiple rear, I think four or five rear ends to get the carrier, good spider gears, uh, 308 gears is what I'm running in there. On 33s, I'm turning 2,000 rip-ems at 75 mile an hour. Uh, bumper and hitch were also from the junkyard. Bilsteins were off uh, Durango. The rear springs, the Leafs, I just put the heaviest ones you can get for a Ranger underneath this to pick it up a little bit. Spare tire carrier, a new one of those. Underneath the springs, I'm running four degree little, uh, you, you can't see in there, uh, four degree shims to correct my pinion angle. So the pinion is slightly down, static, and then under load it rises a couple of degrees so that was that was pretty big it was pretty awful before uh custom i mean just basic but steel drive shaft for it the uh, aluminum one on it was bent parking brake cables for an explorer i made all the adapters right here for running off of the um the rest of the ranger stuff so all that works now uh really just basic stuff but it just takes a while while to nibble away at it that about does it for the back front heaviest again heaviest springs i could get for the ranger i tried going to the junkyard i pulled some f-150 springs and it just wouldn't sit high enough i needed to be a little bit off the bump stops on the control arm so that's what i ended up going with ball joints control arms brakes eight wheel bearings did got new tires for it uh, KO2s, just like our guy Rich loves. Um, I'll probably buy KO2s forever now. Um, just overall great tire. I have 45K on it so far, and they're they're just wearing like iron. Um, doing awesome. I got uh, exhaust put on it. There was a stack coming up out of the bed when I got it, and um, you know I need to run a cap so I can keep stuff inside it. But we'll get back to that later. So up front, this is what I'm running now. When I got it, it had, just like everyone else, the H1C on it. That thing was slow. It didn't make much for boost. And it eventually started leaking oil into the compressor on me. And I was getting some pulling up around the, around the boot over on the intake, so I really didn't want to have any issues with that because, again, I'm dailying this 100 15 miles round trip so I went ahead and started piecing together my whole turbo kit uh, there'll be some pictures of that of mocking it up and um, and finding the parts but we're running AN lines or to the for the oil feed and drain um, the the um, the same adapter as a lot of guys run from the T3 to T6, I think it is, um, to run an HE221W. Just like Rich had, um, I found this probably the same thing that he did. They're just supposed to be a great little turbo for these engines. So that's what I went with. Uh, new downpipe for it, um, bracket for the, for the wastegate, and that's that's the setup that I'm on right now. It'll make about 20 pounds, and that's without fooling around with anything. Uh, it's what I believe what the turbo is supposed to make. Um, I made my own intake pipes. I wanted to go with uh, 
water to air just to keep from having to everything I found was like headlight to headlight so I wanted something that was a little smaller and I already had a cooler from a good buddy of mine that I was able to use so that's what I'm using for an air cooler um, I mean we don't need to get super technical but it's a Volkswagen auxiliary pump it's doing pretty well it doesn't move a whole lot of water but I have another one actually off uh, another engine that I pulled um, turns out W8s use the use those pumps too. So I have another pump to put in line with that one and that's going to move enough water through. Uh, if anyone's curious, the uh, Polaris 570, uh, pretty good parts. Um, everything fits real well. You can use three quarter inch line just like the Volkswagen pump there. Um, so that worked out pretty nice. Piping, I had to keep it simple because I don't have a TIG. I was able to tack stuff up, take it to my buddy, and then he welded up the um, the pipes for me. So that's how we tackled that project. And other stuff, um, the wiring for trailer brakes and stuff like that. This is my own contraption out of, uh, it was off of some Ranger I got at the junkyard. Um, but wired that up so that that's my power distribution block. And there's a neat trick that that thing does because of the way I have it wired, but actually have the fuel solenoid wired correctly instead of a dumb little clicker inside the cab. Uh, lots of wiring stuff. Uh, of course, gauges. We've got boost. We've got EGT. Um, all that fun stuff. So all the wires are coming through the cab. Down underneath there. And these are my gauges, which I am pretty proud of. I did a lot of looking and I only found, I think, a three gauge bezel that you could supposedly fit in these trucks. But again, it seemed like it was pretty universal, so I didn't know how well it was really gonna fit. So it took me about two weeks. I did multiple revisions and came up with these pods. I have them kicked up on different angles so that and it's about where my head sits. You can see all of the gauges. All the aftermarket ones had them over here and it blocks even more of your vision. And with this already being a small truck and the windshield so close, I didn't want to lose that extra visibility and have a huge blind spot. So I made my own gauge pods. Oh, it's kind of dark in here. I am running a Dakota Digital DSL E1, I believe, but I'm using that to, uh, I put a W terminal on the alternator and I'm using that to run the tech completely. Uh, you can tune it and adjust it on your phone via Bluetooth, so that's nice that it's tucked up in there behind the, the gauge cluster and I can still tweak it exactly how I calculated um, the gear ratios and everything out. I'm also using it to correct my speedometer so that reads correctly now instead of five, six, seven mile an hour off. Uh, oil pressure, coolant temp, pulled those sensors off junkyard, um, junkyard engines until I found the right ones. Other than that, oh, here we have a we have our little Christmas tree. Intercooler pump, intercooler fan. The intercooler fan does run off of a temp sensor, but that's just kind of like my override. You might have noticed an extra sensor. Now nah, you can't see it in the intake. So this has a regular ambient air temp sensor in it. And this was added, I had to send this out to get rebuilt, uh, the electronic side of it, but it functionally, it works really nice. It won't update when you're just sitting here at a stand, so it needs the, the input from the speedometer wire. It's um, hooked into there. So you have to be moving for it to change dramatic for temperatures, but ambient air temperature, water temp intercooler coming out of the intercooler, the water temp and intake temperature to the engine after the intercooler. Those are really the, those are reverse lights. Those are the interesting things I've done to it. Since it's a manual and I can't have a, a remote start on it, I decided to do this. Okay. 
so I can come out of work, start my truck, leave it running, block it up, and she'll be warming up and nice and toasty warm when I get back out. The seat heaters are not corrected, connected sadly. These seats turned out to be not OEM Volkswagens. But that's probably one of the most underrated things about the truck. I did that right after I started commuting so much. These are seats out of a Volkswagen Passat, a B5 and a half, and just super comfy. Uh, call me an old man, but I like that lumbar support. Uh, really nice for those longer drives. The Around the shifter there, that was a gaping hole when I got it. And since then I cut the tunnel out of an F-150 so it has a nice boot right integrated into the shaft coming out of the trans and boot and a little console thing out of a Ranger uh, that I had to scoot back a little bit because the shifter does come in a little further back than what the Rangers originally were. That just about does it for in here. If you guys are curious on the fitment of these, they are super snug all the way up to the top and you can get full fit four of them. So I really like that part of it. I've got, that was a huge wiring project. I did that before I put this turbo on and really the only other wiring thing I have now that I did the trailer plug to is I need to make a little panel for my stuff in here. I've got a line running up to there with lights into the bed, loading up to go hunting, loading up to go on a trip to uh, see family out of state. Chances are you're doing that after work, it's dark out, so I can turn that on. I have a couple other relays I wanna put here so that I can also click my reverse lights on and use them as work lights. And that just about does it for Becky the Cranger. Shout out to the Boss Garage. Uh, I really appreciate all that you guys are doing, uh, bringing everyone through these rough times and just how down to earth you guys are. Uh, I hope everyone else is out there staying safe, staying healthy, take care of yourselves, have fun in the garage, and good luck to everyone.